Thanks for joining us today at Synthesis Workshop. I'm your host, Alicia, and for today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Julian Lionette. Julian started his studies at the University of Geneva, where he obtained his bachelor's in chemistry in 2018. He then moved to Uppsala University in Sweden for his master's studies. His degree work with Professor Sasha Ott focused on the mechanistic investigation of the electrochemical reduction of CO2 using ruthenium bipyridyl complexes. In 2020, he moved to the ICIQ in Spain, joining the group of Professor Ruben Martin, where he's currently finishing his doctoral studies. And with that, I'll hand it over to Julian. Welcome, and thanks again for joining us. Thanks for your introduction, and hello everyone. Today, I will be talking about one of our group's most recent publication, a kinetically controlled direct carboxylation of secondary alkyl bromides with CO2 using nickel photoredox chemistry. Before anything else, let me do a brief introduction of the field with the key methodologies from the past 15 years leading to our recent report. The first reductive catalytic carboxylation of an organic halide using a metal catalyst was reported in 2009 by our group. For this reaction, a palladium species was used along with diethyl zinc together with high pressure of carbon dioxide in order to get the products. Three years later, the group of Tsuji and Fujihara reported the first nickel catalyzed reductive carboxylation of aryl and vinyl chlorides. This reaction allowed for the first time for nickel to be at the center of the stage in carboxylation chemistry. This method also allowed for milder conditions using manganese as reductant the atmospheric pressure of CO2 instead of a more pressurized system. In 2014, our group reported for the first time a catalytic reductive carboxylation of alkyl halide species. Primary alkyl bromides were used as static materials by means of nickel catalysis using a phenantrolin derivative as ligand and once again manganese as a reductant. Another key publication in the field was published in 2017 when the same products could be achieved with, again, nickel catalysis, but this time using secondary alkyl bromides as starting materials. This process involved a chain walking type mechanism consisting of iterative beta hydride elimination and hydride incision steps. Thermodynamically favored positions, such as primary or benzylic sites, yielded the corresponding acids elegantly. While all these methods are attractive to build acids moieties from sustainable carbon dioxide, None of them allowed for a selective reaction of a non-terminal and non-activated starting material, as can be seen on the right side of the scheme, in which a secondary alkyl halide could be carboxylated directly. Such a reaction would formally correspond to and substitute the carboxylation of a Grignard reagent or organolithium compound, albeit with milder conditions for broader functional group tolerance, and therefore is highly desirable. As we hypothesized that chain walking happens mostly at the nickel-2 state, and knowing from previous reports that carboxylation of alkyl species with nickel happens at the nickel-1 center, we thought that we might have to do two things. Increase the kinetics of reduction of nickel-2 to nickel-1, and if possible, slower the kinetics of chain walking. Together, this would help a carboxylation to happen before any side path gets initiated, in our case, beta hydrogen elimination. The idea of having a homogeneous reducing system compared to traditionally heterogeneous manganese or zinc metals seemed optimal, as the kinetics would inevitably be faster. After some investigation, we found that the reaction worked in excellent yield and selectivity using 4 pn as a photocatalyst, a modified nickel bromide bipyridine complex as catalyst, Hanchester as sacrificial reductant with cesium carbonate in an MP at 15 degrees Celsius under blue light irradiation. The 2 2 prime substituents on the bipyridine system forces a tetrahedral geometry giving a nice purple color, as can be seen on the picture. Nickel-2 complexes are typically square planar. Therefore, forcing a tetrahedral geometry at the nickel-2 state should in principle reduce the redox potential needed for the reduction of nickel-2 to nickel-1, which is typical in catalytic carboxylation chemistry involving nickel catalysis. The very bulky isobutyl groups as substituents proved to be optimal, along with third butyl groups at the 4 4 prime positions. Slight changes in the substituents led to decreased yield and selectivity. Reducing the loading of either a catalyst and the photocatalyst had the same effect. Changing base, solvent, or reducing system were all detrimental to the outcome too. 
With our optimized conditions in hand, we explored the compatibility of our methodology. And here are some selected examples. All optimization was done with a methyl next to the brominated carbon. Longer chains, such as ethyl or n-butyl, were also well tolerated. Functional groups were compatible, including chlorides, free alcohols, ciliated alcohols, and ketones. Homobenzylic positions were carboxylated without any problem. No benzylic carboxylation was observed in significant amounts, even when orthomethoxy was used as potential directing group. Cyclic substrates bearing protecting groups could be carboxylated too. Finally, pharmaceutically relevant valproic acid could be achieved in excellent yield, along with different heterocycle containing starting materials and other drug or steroid derivatives. We then moved on to do some preliminary mechanistic investigations, as we wanted to understand the intricacies of this selective carboxylation. First, we synthesized the nickel zero complex bearing our ligand, which we use stoichiometrically with our model secondary bromide under CO2, to see if any carboxylation could be observed at all, but no product could be obtained. Repeating the same experiment in the presence of two equivalents of manganese trying to reduce a potential oxidative addition species to trigger carboxylation was not successful either. And subjecting this nickel complex stoichiometrically to the alkyl bromide under our otherwise optimized conditions, target product could be obtained in 28% yield, illustrating the necessity for fast electron transfer. As a second experiment, we decided to use a chiral secondary bromide as starting material probing for potential loss of chirality, which happened to be the case. From this observation, we suggest the formation of a free radical escaping the solvent cage of the metal center before recombining with the nickel complex to finish the catalytic cycle. Then, we tested whether a nickel-1 complex could react with a secondary bromide. When mixing both preformed nickel-1 bromide bearing our bipyridine and the secondary bromide, the following alkene was obtained in 78% yield. This result interestingly showcases that bipyridine nickel-1 bromide is able to do an oxidative addition type mechanism, probably through a single electron transfer pathway into the bromide. The last mechanistic experiment performed was a deuterium labeling. On the right side, we can see that under our optimized conditions with the developed ligand, the corresponding product can be obtained as sole product, with no deuterium scrambling all over the chain. This is indicative that no beta hydride elimination is taking place prior to carboxylation. On the left side, we decided to use another ligand that purposely does not yield good selectivity, as we wanted to observe where the deuterium atoms would go. The mixture of products obtained in 26% yield contained nearly 1 to 1 ratio of linear and branched carboxylic acids. While the branched product was the same as with our ligand 1, the linear carboxylic acid and had deuteriums scrambled all over the chain in ratios qualitatively similar to the same experiment performed on our previous publication on chain walking carboxylation. With the help from the Hopman group and Dr. Per Ulla Norby for DFT calculations, along with our preliminary experiments, we proposed the following catalytic cycle. The nickel 2 precursor is reduced to nickel 1 species, 1. This complex can react with the secondary bromide in a single electron transfer manner, giving nickel 2 bromide and a free radical, intermediate 2 and 3 respectively. The radical then gets trapped by a surrounding nickel 1 bromide species, giving intermediate 4, that we believe to be the resting state of the reaction. One electron reduction of this complex to the corresponding nickel 1 allows for the carboxylation step, which gives the product after metal exchange, closing the cycle. It is probably important to note that while we stress the importance of the kinetics for this event, the selectivity could not be observed without ligand design. Thus kinetics enable selectivity, but the ligand achieves it. With that, I would like to thank my thesis supervisor Ruben Martin, my whole group, and of course all the people involved in this work. I also want to thank our funding bodies and Matt for inviting me to participate to the Synthesis Workshop series. That's all, thank you very much. Thank you to Julian for this spotlight on this new kinetically controlled direct carboxylation methodology. If you would like to learn more about this chemistry or use it yourself, please visit Julian's recent publication in JAX. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to support our podcast, please consider subscribing to us here on YouTube or following us on Twitter. Thanks again, and we hope to see you next time.